Hey, what up, what up, Tay here. So I'm recording this for the second time because my cat is an asshole. So I'm just gonna jump right into it and we're talking about Defenders and Defenders villains. Okay, so we know Sigourney Weaver is the main big bad and is being introduced in the first season of Defenders. Marvel has been pretty secretive and ambiguous when speaking about her. They are calling her Alexandra, and the Defenders showrunner Marco Ramirez recently said she's very formidable and is always the smartest person in the room. And he also talked about how she has ties to the organizations we've seen in the past Marvel Netflix shows, and more than that, she has ties to all of the individual Defenders superhero origins. And Luke Cage actor Mike Coulter said she doesn't just bring together all the heroes but all the villains in reference to Alexandra in an interview he did last week. Now the first season of The Defenders is only eight episodes long and that's not a lot of time to tell a story with four main characters and also include all their past villains but I will come back to that in a second. And Mike Coulter also said in that same interview from last week that season one of The Defenders takes place over just a few days. And then he accidentally confirmed that Madame Gao would also be a part of the show as well. Which is not at all surprising, but has not been confirmed officially by Marvel prior to that interview. So, anyway. Let's talk about speculation and what other villains we could see in the Defenders. We know that Madame Gao is coming back, who's a part of the Hand, and we've seen Elektra in the trailer, who was basically commandeered by the Hand once she found out she was the Bringer of Shadows, also known as the Black Sky. So they are a sure thing. Then there's also the duplicitous team-up of Davos and Joy Meacham. And then from Jessica Jones, there was Kilgrave, but he's dead. And then there's also Simpson, and he's still around, and maybe we could see him. Then from Luke Cage, there's Diamondback, Mariah Dillard, and Shades. And I like Shades, even though he's a douchebag who wears his sunglasses indoors. But come on, he's Juice from Sons of Anarchy. So I would like to see him come back at some point. And I wouldn't be at all surprised if we saw Mariah Dillard briefly show up in Defenders at some point as well. And then there's Wilson Fisk and Frank Castle, and they haven't set a release date yet for Season 1 of The Punisher, only that it comes out this year and after The Defenders, which airs August 18th. So it will probably come out in October or November around the same time Luke Cage came out last year and Jessica Jones the year before that. Anyway, my point is, I think it's very likely The Punisher will show up in one or two episodes of The Defenders. For one, the two shows were both shooting in New York at the same time a few months back, which is very convenient scheduling that would make it very easy for actor John Barenthal to jump over and shoot a few days on Defenders. And it would make sense for Marvel Netflix to put him in there to get people excited for the season one of The Punisher coming two or months later after Defenders. And then as far as The Punisher's role of what it could be on Defenders, you know, on season two of Daredevil, Frank Castle was more of an adversary than a villain. So if he shows up on Defenders, it could be a similar type situation where when the Defenders and Punisher cross paths initially, they could be fighting each other, but then come together to battle a common enemy such as the Hand. So anyway, let's get back to Alexandra. So even though Marvel announced her name was Alexandra, there's a lot of people theorizing there's more to it than she's just an ultra-intelligent captain of industry with some dubious affiliations. Like some are saying she's the Beast, the ancient demon lord of the Hand who appeared in the Daredevil comic series Shadowland. And it does look like Defender Season 1 is using some story elements from Shadowland. In that series, the Defenders go up against Elektra after she has died and is resurrected by the Hand. And we know that's what happens in Season 2 of Daredevil going into the Defenders. And what also happens in Shadowland is the Beast, the Demon Lord of the Hand, possesses Matt Murdock. So the idea is on the Defenders TV show is that instead of the Beast possessing Matt Murdock, it's possessed Sigourney Weaver's character, Alexandra. You know, some super high up symbol of corporate power. Then the other speculative villain thesis is pretty similar to the one I just described, but first let me quickly explain this. Marvel is divided into a few different departments that for the most part function separate from one another. There's Marvel Comics, Marvel Television, and Marvel Studios, which is Marvel's film division who does all of the MCU movies. 
and Marvel Studios, you know, Marvel movies, they get first dibs on any characters they want before Marvel Television. But it's been long speculated that Marvel Television does have dibs on Mephisto. Then last year, at the same time the Defenders was going into production, someone who claimed to be an anonymous source who worked for Marvel did a few interviews claiming that the villain of Defenders would be in fact Mephisto. So Marvel TV could then set up their new phase of dark Marvel Netflix shows such as Blade, Moon Knight, and a Johnny Blaze Ghost Rider series. And we don't know how legit this anonymous source is, but it was seemingly enough so to be interviewed by some somewhat legit media outlets. And in the last few months, Marvel has coincidentally spoken publicly about possibly doing a Netflix series for those same exact shows, those three shows. But they did say if they do a Blade TV show, it would likely be separate and not affiliated in the MCU canon. Anyway, so the Mephisto theory with D the Defenders and Alexandra is, is that Alexandra is what she appears to be, just kind of an evil corporate businesswoman working with these different nefarious organizations, but Mephisto is kind of in the background pulling the strings. Then the other is basically what I described earlier, but instead of Alexandra being possessed by the Beast, she's been possessed by Mephisto. Or it could also be that Mephisto has been posing as her on Earth, kind of like Al Pacino as the devil in The Devil's Advocate, but presumably just a lot better. But I'm not going to get my hopes up. I think that would be very cool to see, but um, we don't know for sure what's happening. These are just theories and anonymous sources, but I figured it was worth talking about because I would love to see Mephisto used on Marvel Netflix. I would love to see him in the movies as well, but I think it would be really cool to have a big villain like that on the TV side of things as well. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. There's so much going on right now. We just got a new Game of Thrones teaser, or trailer, actually, full trailer. We just got two new Spider-Man trailers, which are uh, one of them, the international one, I love. The other one was good, too. Flash just finished up, so I've got a lot of videos to do, a lot of shit to talk about, so check back soon, and I will be back with more as soon as possible. All right, thanks, guys.